It's officially Dynasty offseason, people. That's right. Redraft might be over, but Dynasty, we're getting to the good part now. That's it's right. the offseason. It's time to make moves. It's time to dream up your team. <laughs> and we're giving you buy or sell on the video today. One player in particular, someone who caught fire to end the year, his first year in the league, Amon Ross St. Brown, That's right. the sun god himself. <laughs> Uh, had a great year. 90 receptions on 119 targets, 912 total yards, and six total touchdowns. Really caught fire in those last couple of weeks. So, Badaki, in Dynasty, are you buying this offseason? Are you buying or selling Amon Ross St. Brown if you have him or don't? Yeah, I'm definitely buying Amon Ross St. Brown. And it's just purely because of his talent. He's extremely talented. And the way they used him at, towards the end of the season, that's where we really saw him flourish, to be completely mm-hmm. honest. That's where he took off. We saw him use... In the backfield and obviously in the slot, that was his his gem yeah. kind of go to. It was kind of Debo Samuel with a little bit of sprinkle. Like really, <laughs> when I say a little bit of sprinkle, I mean like they sprinkled a little Tiny. bit of Debo on a monitor. A little Ron. bit. Yeah. One percent Debo. Yeah. It was like, oh, okay. Can you you can be Debo, but you're not. <laughs> But yeah, look, I, I'm buying a Monroe St. Brown. I, I love this. I love this kid coming in from last year, or from when we were scouting him earlier, and now yeah. in the season, now first year in the in the NFL, he did great. He did yeah. fantastic. I definitely think he. When we look at expectations, I think he surpassed those expectations. Yeah. We can all confidently say that coming out of USC, we loved him. We love scouting him. Thought he was underdrafted in the mm-hmm. real draft. We were surprised. Amon Ra is still on the board. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the wide receivers that went for him, didn't understand. But massive talent. I am buying, but cautiously. I'm more okay. indifferent, but if I had to lean one way, I'm going to buy, but it depends on the price, okay? Okay. We look at his season. Week 13 onwards is really when he took off. Week 13 onwards from that period, he was a wide receiver too in PPR formats. Right. And most importantly, he was second in targets. And uh, the game plan was clear from week 13 onwards. Get him on <laughs> the ball. Clearly. Like that was the game plan. Fun fact, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but Dan Campbell actually took over play calling duties from Anthony Lynn okay. in week 10. So week 10 onwards, you saw Amon Ra get more and more involved. And from what we understand, the plan is for... Dan Campbell to resume play calling duties in 2022. Mm. So you would assume that Amon Ra is going to continue to be involved. I, I need to tell you a couple of reasons why I'm worried though. Okay. I am slightly worried because right now this could be an off season where people buy Amon Ra too high and he doesn't have the longevity of what you saw towards the back half of this year. Right. Reasons I'm worried is one TJ Hawkinson was on the IR. Okay. Okay. I believe that was from week 14 onwards. TJ Hawkinson was was on the IR. Yeah. And DeAndre right. Swift missed weeks 12 to 16. And when he came back in week 17, he didn't really get his full workload. Let me ask you this. And I want to ask anyone who's watching this. Who is the most talented offensive player on this team? It's either TJ or Swift. It's DeAndre Swift. Without a doubt <laughs> in my to- mind, is DeAndre Swift. And I think we can all look if you watch those games, week 17 and 18, Swift was not utilized the way that I expect him to be utilized yeah. next year as a healthy player. I agree. So there's a little bit of worry for me. And when it comes to Debo, yeah, I get I get the Debo comp, but the reality is Debo is the most talented player on his team. Swift is the most talented player on this team. So right. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, let's not forget, Swift was seeing like 10 targets a game. And right. I know, I know that... Here's the deal. Swift and Amon Ra can both be successful, but I don't know what Amon Ra looks like with a healthy TJ and a healthy DeAndre Swift. You know, what will that look like? But yeah. again, it all comes down to price. So mm-hmm. let me ask you, what's a price that you're willing to pay? Because I might see this a little bit differently to you. Um, It depends on, well, obviously how high you kind of, you know, how high you see him, you know, where, where you yeah. see his value for me, I, I like a Monro in the first round, maybe a late a late in the first round, maybe a mid-end first round. Uh, okay. I'm really comfortable in seeing and paying that price for a Monro. But I understand your concerns, though. Like, yeah. I see where you're coming from, and I understand that, you know, everyone is kind of up in the air, at least it, on yeah. that team. What, what would be terrible is if, here's the deal. If you're watching this video, do not give up two first round picks. Do not give up right. Cooper cup. You know, like don't, right. don't do something crazy this off season for Amon Ra St. Brown, because while we saw some really, really good things, 
a lot of things went his way. A lot of things yeah. went his way. Uh, for me, what's a fair price to pay? I'm willing to give up a late first round pick in 2022 to okay. get Amon Ross St. Brown. Okay. I do think there's more talented players in this year's draft than St. Brown. So some people might be like, he, he did fantastic. I'll give the 101. That's not where I am. I mean, Traylon Burks, right. other people in this draft, I view higher than Amon Ra. But late round, 2022 first, I'm willing to do that. Um, it makes sense. Personally, I would like to ask you where you have him ranked. I have him ranked top 28 yeah. amongst wide receivers in Dynasty. I couldn't put him top 24. I couldn't put him top 20. I have slight skepticism, but this is someone... Honestly, he could next year he could finish top ten. That that is within the I realm agree. of possibilities for I, Amon Ross St. Brown. It's I, I probably can, not gonna happen. <laughs> I, I see Amon Ra finishing with everything going the right way, if he actually can, he can finish where Hunter Renfro finished this year. Right. You know, like that is a yeah, then that, that's the comp the comp that I can give him. You know, he's not an amazing he's he's not gonna go crazy every single week, but he's gonna be consistent. And yeah. I completely agree with you. Top top twenty eight uh, wide receiver, uh, especially in dynasty. So I like I like that personally. Let me ask you a question before we continue. Yeah. Who, if they were to bring in, because I think everyone understands they didn't yeah, have yeah. Any another they didn't have going. another wide receiver. You know, you, I mean, Brashad Perryman was there, and then he left, and all these other guys, whatever the case may be. Yeah. What if they were to bring in an Allen Robinson, Godwin, right. uh, Juju, a Michael right. Gallup? Uh, does Amon Ra then all of a sudden fall? Because I do believe the, these names right. sur- will surpass his focus. Like, mm, you know what? Amon Ra's going to be irrelevant if, the, I'm if not one worried. of these guys come For in. a couple reasons, I'm not worried. One, nobody wants to go to Detroit, okay? <laughs> no free agent is going to look right. at Detroit and say, you know what? I'd love to live there <laughs> with that organization. As, right. as much as it's fun to root for Dan Campbell, um, no, there's no free agent that's that's going to want to be in Detroit. Let's just right. be 100% honest there. And where they're in the draft currently, I imagine them taking a defensive player early on in this draft. So while it's a possibility, the Lions can't deny what they saw from Amon Ra. So I, I think as from, from the wide receiver group, he's without question going to be the guy next year. But I'm just he's looking at be the tight the end, running back, right. in the wide receiver room for them, right? Oh, okay. But... I'm still saying Swift, TJ, how does he fill in with them? So they right. have good okay. weapons. I think defensively, that's what they need to look at. Right. Um, but I, we'll I'm, see. The only, if, if I was, I'm really confident in Monroe. The only way I am concerned is if they bring in someone bigger that surpasses, quote unquote, okay. his talent. To say, you, you know what? We're just going to focus on the Allen Robinson. We're going to focus on the Chris Godwin because they are more talented they're more solidified in the league yeah. and people are going to focus on them. And this offense, in my opinion, will probably focus on their talent more than Amon Ross talent. That's the only concern. Okay. If there was a concern for me, but other than that, I, I like his price. I like where he's going. Top 28 yeah. wide receiver. I love it. So we're both buys, but cautiously buying depending mm-hmm. on price. You might be curious. Hey, I have this trade offer for Amon Ross. Should I do it? Comment down below. We'd be happy to help. Good luck in the offseason. Happy trading. Yo, what's good? What Thanks up? for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos. Watch now, it. You can also subscribe. Right now. If you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm-hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasy land fam.